You ever wonder why there's no money in track? Well, one of the hypest early season meets was on this weekend, and it was streamed on an athlete's YouTube channel. A professional athlete gets hurt and has to be helped off the track by two other athletes. Two of the highest profile athletes in all of the sport right now dodged the event last minute, and event organizers allow the athletes to run into headwinds of up to 5 meters per second, destroying any chance of a good performance. And that was just the one meet. I just can't do it. I can't take this shit no more, man. Starting from the 5th of April, Quincy Wilson would give us our weekly reminder to stay scared. He'd decide to double his normal distance, lining up in an 800 meter. And it would actually be his teammate Abrams leading around the first lap, become the last bend, and Wilson would show us that elite 400 meter strip. In this 800, not his event, but look at him go. Wilson will pass Abrams, his teammate. The top 400 meter runner in the country will win the 800. Going an insane 1 minute and 50.44 seconds. Just a sneaky 10 second PR like it's nothing. That was the 4th fastest high school time of the year, and even edging out his teammate who has a PR of 149. Just high school thing. This is a nightmare! The same day would see a Division 2 athlete run the fastest 100 meter time of the week. And with some of the elite lineups later on in the week, that's a bloody impressive feat. Isaac Bozio, out of West Texas A&M, goes an incredible 9.90 seconds. And it was a pretty tight race with Manu in second in a time of 10.02. Sadly, the wind's slightly illegal at 2.2 meters per second. But honestly, answer me this. How many NCAA athletes are we going to see in the Olympic 100 meter final? Yule Reith out in Australia gives us our first taste of some real men's high jumping in a hot minute. Clearing 2.30 with room to spare. Dude has been killing out at small meets in Victoria. Going over 2.26. 228 and now 230 adding five centimeters to his 2023 personal best and lastly for the fifth alita van darlin furthers her own ncaa discus lead again this week there you go she barely missed a feature last week but god dang do it two weeks in a row and you gotta make the cut 62.23 meters for the beast now onto what should have been the biggest outdoor meet of the year so far the Miramar Invitational. And before it could even start, we were hit with the recent 100 meter world champion, Shakari Richardson, dropping out. I will not be competing this weekend in Miramar. And then Sharika Jackson pulled out two days before the meet also. Okay, we can still salvage this. But that stop time is vastly different oh, wow. than the time we're getting at 20.35. And the men's 100 meter would be decided by a bee's dick. Akeem Blake, bronze medalist in the 60 at World Indoors, and Courtney Lindsay, last year's NCAA 100 meter champ, would both bring it home in 10.28 seconds. Honestly, a bit of a depressing time, but Lindsay takes the wind against the strongest 100 meter field this year and into a very hefty headwind. The women's side saw Melissa Jefferson handedly take the wind in 11.19 seconds and into another reasonable headwind. Forbes drops out of the race in seven, but now coming up in six, that's Jefferson. By the time being kind of average, this was genuinely a pretty big win. Six of the runners in this field being sub-11 sprinters. Forbes from Jamaica also pulled up early and was helped off the track by Shakari Richardson and Tanisha Terry. Two non-competing athletes because the medical staff were too slow to react. Like seriously, she pulled up and five minutes later she was still hobbling on the side of the track. Professional athletes, unprofessional sport. The men's 200 gave us a matchup of the Titans. Christian Coleman, one of the fastest to ever do it, versus Kenny Benerick from Juco to 200 meter Olympic medalist. And we're underway with the men's 200 here in Miramar. Come in stride for stride. I don't know that Coleman has put enough distance between him and Kung Fu Kenny, and now Kung Fu Kenny's in control. He's and lost his headband. The headband is lost, but the race is not as... And with his signature headband getting caught up in the gusting negative 2.8 headwinds, Benerick takes a healthy win over Coleman. Honestly, hear me out. Pretty good opening 200s, considering what they were dealing with. I truly believe both these guys will go sub-20 next meet. You know, outside of Tornado weather that is. Over in the 400, we get the return of superstar Britton Wilson, 
who was an absolute mutant last year in the NCAA, going sub 50 in the 400 seven times. This was her first individual race since being wheeled off at the 2023 World Champs, and she'd do us proud, coming out on top in 51.07 seconds. This being against Shamir Little, the world's silver medalist in the 400 meter hurdles. Catcher, the strength is there, but maybe not where it needs to be. And while the wind, dropouts, and dodgy officiating almost completely ruined this meet, the women's 100 meter hurdles would still persevere and give us a banger race. Into another torturous headwind of negative 1.3 meters per second, Alicia Johnson would go 12.80 for the fifth fastest time in the world. Doing that again here. Middle of the track though, out wide, and eight was Sember closing very good at the end. But not without some competition, as Cindy Simba out of the UK was closely on her tail in 12.83. Congrats to these two putting up a fight and winning against the win. But while the track was failing us, it would be field, and namely the throws to save the day. First, Jamaica's Ralford Mullings would spin and sling the discus to a decisive New World lead of 69.67 metres. To then be followed up two rounds later by Nick Percy out of Scotland, pumping out a new national record and Olympic qual of 67.73 metres, which is now the third furthest throw of the year. And yeah, while the distances are huge, it's hard to tell with these fucking awful camera angles. But as if a message from the gods to respect the damn throws, Nicholas Elekner, at a completely different meet, would destroy both of these marks with a goliath of a throw. 71.39 meters. And look at that baby fly. That's a legitimate top 10 performance all time. The discus is on world record watch this year. And to finish some top tier throwing, we'd get our final display of godly strength by Jada Ross putting out a new NCAA record in the women's shot. 19.73 meters in San Diego to become the most powerful woman in collegiate track and field ever. Now, back to some wacky track business. I give Fred Curley shit sometimes, but at least this man actually runs when he says he is. He goes 10.11 in Florida to take a win. He had some friendly tailwind, and I'm gonna say it. This might be an average time at best, but thank you Fred Curley for actually running when others don't. Out in South Florida, Puerto Rico's finest and Olympic champ, Jasmine Camacho Quinn would debut her season in the 100 hurdles. 12.69, a legitimate stunning opener, putting NCAA athletes in their place, winning by over 0.7 of a second. Another sub 10 would also happen to grace our screens, but it's kind of debatable whether it's worth the shout out. Abdul Rashid Aminu, goes 9.95 with a blazing positive 3.6 tailwind. That's about the same amount of win Florence Griffith Joyner had. Jokes aside, the NCAA just keeps spitting hot results out. Out in South Carolina, there was a meet that would have made the perfect total running productions video about two seasons ago. The two great white hopes of US sprinting were out to play, Abby Steiner and Matthew Bowling at the same meet. Abby makes her return after struggling with a foot injury at the end of last season, running a 400 meter, 51.58 seconds with some very funny camera work. A good time for a comeback, and she takes a confidence building win. It's a far cry from what we've witnessed in the past, but it's good to see her back. It is Abby Steiner. Good job. Number one. And Bowling would make a low key appearance in the 100 meter. He goes 10.20 to win the meet with a legal win. Hey, not so bad, right? Considering the amount of longer work he's doing now for the 400. And he also ran the two in 20.31. And last but not least, but also there's no footage of it anywhere, a Navia battle runs the second fastest legal time of the year for 11.05 seconds with a perfect 2.0 win. This time represents a fraction of what Miramar should have been if they simply turned the athletes around. A bit of a tragic week, the Miramar Invitational shit the bed, there's some really scuffed and missing footage overall, and why was the entirety of the US so windy when it's like 2,800 miles across? But we do have something to look forward to, since in a couple of weeks, April 20th, we're getting the Zayman Diamond League in China. And look at these lineups. Track needs money? Well here it is. Chinese money talks, and now all the pros will be out to play. Thanks for watching, 
See you next time.